All right, how's it going, you guys? So in today's episode of Hog Squad, I'm gonna be breaking down everything you need to know about fishing yellowtail. And actually, a little disclaimer before I get into everything. My boat's been down, that's why I've been posting as much. I finally figured out what the issue is, and it took us pretty much all summer to find why the boat was going into limp mode, everything, because we actually found someone whose boat also got hit by a car and also had the same issue, and it took them forever to find it. So luckily we found it. So the boat videos will be coming back soon on my boat, on the Striper. So yeah, guys, that's huge news for us. And, but yeah, basically this episode, all I'm getting into is yellowtail fishing. The tackle over like the seasons that I figured out works the best. When it comes to fishing kelp patties, when it comes to fishing the islands like Catalina, Clemente, Barbara, just all of it. Just what works, what doesn't work. Most importantly, the setups from the gear to the baits. Even the line, like line's a big thing when it comes to the tail, as you guys know, and the hooks, and just why you use what you use when, you know. It's a pretty uh, basic video coming to you guys, and uh, very helpful one, I hope. So let's get right into it. You. All right, guys. The first thing I will get into is the line. So when it comes to selecting your fluorocarbon leader for a tail, you guys need two things. I recommend either going gold label or green label. I know gold label is expensive, right? It's obviously expensive. So there's always green label too. Green label has just smaller diameter and then gold label has the thinnest, which I take is the small, the smallest out of all of them diameter. I'm not sure because I've heard like green label is better than gold label, like green labels, like thinnest. I, I don't, I mean, I don't know. They both work great. I mean, I'm pretty sure it says right here on gold label is the thinnest leader. But some guy was arguing that green label is better, so just try it yourself. But anyways, the reason I recommend these two, one is it gives you an edge. So if you're on a charter boat, right, and everyone's just throwing normal 25 pound, right, like normal 25 pound, they're not getting bit, and you throw in gold label 25, it's gonna look smaller, it's gonna look lighter, your bait's gonna look different. It's gonna give you the edge you need to catch the yell one yelltail a day or catch the one fish of the day, you know. It's just all about having that edge. And even just for fishing the island, right? One thing we figured out this year was when we go to Catalina, right? None of, none of my friends would be getting bit. I one day decided, huh, I'm going to buy a gold label. I threw it on, and I was the only person getting bit that day. And they all threw a gold label, and they all started getting bit. Because it's sometimes just a small changes. And the good thing about gold label, too, is that um, it has a strength of 25 pounds, but smaller diameter, which means it's thinner. Fish can't see it, but you get the same strength which is huge. And then green label, clearly thinner, same thing. But yeah, guys, fishing is all about getting that edge, honestly. Especially like if you're on a charter boat, getting the edge is huge. I mean, I can't tell you how many times like I've seen that one guy that catches all the fish. For, it's like, what is he doing? You know what I mean? But for example, uh, Plantinga, you've seen him in the videos. He was on a boat and he did not have gold or green label. And this one guy with green label was one guy in the boat who had it and he caught all the yellow tail. He caught like seven yellowtail. Plantinka showed me a picture. This guy got like seven yellowtail and Plank got one, one yellowtail. And this guy got seven. And he caught all the yellowtail pretty much on the boat. So basically all he had was this and he had the edge. So just remember that guys, like always remember that. Like the edge could be anything from smaller line to smaller hooks. All right guys, so now I'm gonna begin to the hooks. So here we got some hooks, some ringed hooks. I recommend the ring glide bait hooks by Mustad. They work great. I've always used them and I never had a problem with them. And they're size one, smaller. I recommend smaller hooks, you know, because as you guys know, yellowtail can be hook shy, which at first, I remember when I first started fishing, I'm like, well, how can a fish be hook shy? You know what I mean? It, it, but I've seen it happen, so I know it's real. But um, I recommend, so these are like, these are J's, but um, you know, for me, it's like circle hook, J hook. Um, Circle hooks are easier to use, just wind into the fish. You get them, J hooks, you set them. It's honestly, circle hooks, people always say, oh, circle hooks are less experience, but sometimes it just, people with the circle hook catch more fish because people with the J hooks don't know when to set it correctly or they don't even know it's a J hook, you know? But circle hook, J hook, they both work great. Just know which one you like, know which one you can use better. That's my recommendation on hooks. But, or like, for example, like I was talking about earlier, finicky fish with a line. If fish are finicky, get the size smaller in hooks and you'll be set. I mean, 
It's one of those things, like, what's your edge gonna be, you know? The smaller hook, that could be your edge. For example, I got these little live bait hooks. Look how small they are. That can be an edge sometimes to your advantage. Always take advantage of that stuff. If no one's getting bit, be the first guy to make the change. Don't be afraid to make the change. I'm telling you guys, never be afraid to make the change. Like, for example, this is a different fish, obviously, but for bluefin foamers, I always say, take the second, breathe, relax. Like, if you're tying something on, if you're not getting bit on something, and, like, the foamer goes down, and you know it's going to pop up again, breathe, relax, change over your baits. Always take the second to make the change. You never want to be the last guy to make the change, because the guy who always makes the change catches the most fish. So even sometimes with these little teeny hooks, be the guy to make the change, but make sure they're good hooks, make sure they're not gonna bend out. These ones did not bend out on me. Like I caught a yellowtail on one of these ones because they were being finicky and I put that right in the butt of the sardine and it got bit. So I'll be the first guy to make the change, you know. Hook size is basically just vary on the size of your bait. You know, if you got a big old mackerel, you might wanna get like a bigger than a size one, size two, size three, you know. It's just all about, uh, about the size of the bait or if you're trying to hide the hook or if the fish are hook shy so that's another thing to get into but next i will be going over the artificials that catch yellowtail so basically when i get into this i'm gonna be going down from the iron clearly a known thing the two baits like the hookup baits and even the a-rig and i'll get into that one for you guys and you guys that's a pretty interesting one so the first bait i want to get into are the irons all right Basically, everyone knows service iron. You cast them, you wind them in, you get bit. But when it comes to selecting your iron, imperfection is key. And what I mean by that, offset eyes, you see how that eye right there is offset? There's something imperfect about it. It makes them swim better, basically. You see offset, the 45's going over here. It just looks, it looks wrong, but imperfection is key when it comes to selecting irons. And colors. So for yellowtail fishing, I like to go like the bait fishy colors, you know, like get the white and the blue, the straight mint, the mint and white, the scrambled egg. I just like to get those, basically, those are my go-to colors when I come to the yellowtail and throw in the iron. I never, I never get like weird colors, I'll be honest with you guys. I never, I don't know. It's just a comfortable thing. It's a confidence thing. In my opinion, it's just the way they swim. I think I could throw a pink fluorescent iron out there and if it kicked right, a yellowtail will eat it when they're biting like that. When they're biting the iron, they're fired up. They're just re they're just reacting to how it's kicking, how it's swimming. They're just like, oh, what's that? It's just a straight reaction bite. So personally, I just think about it like that. And uh, yeah, let's get into something new with the uh, Lucky Craft Jerk Bait. So you may have seen this in other videos, but th these are like the Lucky Craft Surf Pointers, the bigger one, but they're sinking jerk baits. And I, you may have seen this one where I go lights out on Bonita on these things. I mean, these things, when the fish are fired up, current's moving, these things will get you a yellowtail. I mean, if you get it past Bonita, because, uh, I mean, Bonita loves these things, but I have seen yellowtail caught on these. I have caught one yellowtail on one of these. Um, basically, you rip it, stop, rip it, stop. And I mean, there's times where these, like, with the Bonita are there, where like I'll literally cast it and then like one rip this thing is gone but I, I get the bigger size because that um works better for the yellowtails because yellowtail with artificials bigger the bait the better see I feel like match it up with the iron look at that basically the same size think of it like this you don't want to waste the calories the fish doesn't want to waste the calories you know if they see like I don't know let's see if I have something small so for example if it's like a bait fish that's like this big and then this, he's going to eat this. Because why would you waste the calories on, like, something so small? You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know. But it's just like, the fish don't want to waste the calories. They're, they're eating to survive. That's how I look at it. Yeah, basically, this is the one jerk bait that I, I've used for yellowtails. And I like it because it sinks. If it's a sinking one, don't get the floating run. Get the sinking one. Next, let's get into two baits. So... Two baits, for some reason, the way they swim, yellowtail dig them. So basically, this is the hookup bait right here. This is the uh, sexy smelt. This has been a good color for yellowtail. I have caught yellowtail on this. As you saw in my, my SBI video, I uh, was even fishing for yellowtail, but we marked them at a, because like it's SBI, 90 foot, we were rock fishing, and we marked yellowtail. You could see it, it was a little school coming under us. 
and I threw on a double rig. Double rig is very good for catching yellowtail. All right, guys. I just got back from work, and I realized that my A-rig footage got deleted, so I'm redoing it. So here we go. I'm in my work clothes right now. But So basically, when it comes to fishing yellowtail on the A-rig, get yourself the extra heavy A-rigs. You don't want the, the light ones. They can uh, cause some damage on those. And plus, A-rigs are expensive, so you don't want them to break. But it comes with one like major trick to it. Um, fish big baits, guys. Fish a giant school of big baits. Think of it like a spreader bar. If you guys know what that is for bluefin tuna, it's just a lot of baits out there. And it just intrigues the fish instantly. So you're going to fish anywhere from these size of baits, like your five inch plastics. I'm pretty sure this is five inch, maybe six inch. And then your big like nine inch ones. Like you just want to fish like a, just a whole load of these. Like I would do like, for example, I would do these two on the bottom, these two on top, and then like a lighter one in the middle because you want it to be heavy on the bottom. You don't want it to spin. You never want your A-Rig to spin. But yeah, the A-Rig, I've seen a lot of posts with him, yellowtail in their mouth. Um, I've done it one time, one time only, and it works. I mean, it makes sense it works. I mean, it works for halibut works for spotty, works for everything. The A-Rig's like a great technique because there's just a lot of baits putting in front of them. It looks like a school of fish swimming by and they just, that's why I like the double hookup bait rig gets bit by Yellowtail because it's just more baits in their face. It's, it's more reason to go attack it instead of just a single bait swimming away. It just, it looks funny, you know what I mean? Because usually bait sticks together. So it, it kind of looks funny. It just looks like a little stray bait running by, you know, for Calicos it's good, but like for Yellowtail, they want that school. They want that action of like a school swimming by to just trigger it, you know? But yeah, A-Rig's a great way of getting a reaction bite, and I recommend you guys try it out. It works. So vertical jigs. All right. This is the Extrada jig. Um, I love this thing. I smoked Amberjacks with this in Key West, and uh, I have not got the chance to use it on Yellowtail this summer. Um, I'm new to vertical jigging. I've been doing it. I love it. It's like a workout while you're fishing. It's great. And when you get bit by the fish, you're exhausted and you're ready to fight. It's it's a great time. I mean, trying these out on the Amberjack in a Key West was amazing. And one time I heard a story originally of a guy from a trustworthy source that was a vertical jig where everyone was yo-yo fishing. He got 12 yellowtail. Everyone else caught like one or two. So clearly they work. And I saw a guy vertical jigging one time and he was roping yellowtail. This was when I was younger. It was a Japanese dude. He was roping, and everyone was looking at him like, oh, this dude's helmet, but he was roping fish. So, you know, might as well do it if you're catching fish on it. But yeah, I think these are pretty cool. Um, the Extrada jigs have a rattler inside, which gives off a micro vibration. So as you guys know, fish is anatomy. They have uh, lateral lines. So they feel out their prey, they feel them out, and this does a great job of triggering that. For example, when we were at Key West, Amberjacks and Yellowtail, you know, look very similar, the same family, look very identical, except one's yellow, one's uh, silver and very mean. <laughs> but um, I took the rattler out, this didn't get bit, I put the rattler, because like a bunch of people were vertical jigging next to us, not catching Jack when we were in Key West. And I took the rattler out, this wasn't getting bit, took it, put it back in, first drop it got bit. So that makes a huge difference, just that. But yeah, I wanna do this for Yellowtail. I guarantee you guys it works. I've seen it work and everything, so try it. Why not? I mean, sure, vertical jigging <laughs> setups are expensive, but guess what? They work. All right, guys, to the setup. So right here, I got my Trinidad 16A on my Pen Carnage. Um, I love this setup. It's fantastic, it's quality. I love the Trinidad 16A. It's got power behind it, so I can fish heavy on it. I don't you guys are like, really? Like, 30s, like, got power, blah, blah, blah. I think the 16 handles Yellowtail just fine. I messed up Thresher Sharks on these, and this is, like, 9-foot Threshers. I mean, you tighten down the drag, it's got some power. So, I love it. Trinidad 16A, it's a great setup. And on the pen, even better. It's, like, my beefier fly line stick. And it is a good yo-yo stick, actually, because it's, like, stays put so well. But, yeah. Basically, I love this setup for Yellowtail. This would be like the yo-yo setup. I mean, you can't really vertical jig on it because um, there's not that much action in the rod, but this is a good yo-yo setup and a uh, great uh, live bait setup if you're gonna go heavy, if you don't wanna get rocked. I trust this.
Setup number two, we got the uh, Pen 400. Definitely has power on it. If it came to like fishing the island, bigger class yellowtail, and um, there's structure around, I'm not gonna fish this for them ever because once again, it is a low profile reel and drag will slip at times, you know? And you're not, I mean, you are thumb the spool, but it's just a lighter setup. Got my Phoenix M1 inshore. I mean, it's a good fly lining stick, great for calico bass. Got the drag power for that, but when it comes to yellowtail, I'm not gonna be fishing this on the island, tight to structure, any of that. But I do like fishing it on kelp patties, and I like fishing it fuller grade yellowtail on the island. I mean, power for that, but if we're talking bigger fish, like your 25 to 30 pound class, and the structure around, and they're gonna break you off, don't do it. Save this for um, not getting broken off, you know? Uh, but yeah, it's a good rod. I mean, the rod is fun to throw bait sticks on. Like I could throw, I could throw the A-rig on this for yellowtail. I could throw hookup bait, double rig easily on this for yellowtail. It's a great setup. I love the Pen 400, you guys. It's probably one of my favorite little profiles out there right now. Yeah, good setup. I mean, but just like, don't be using it in a situation where you're going to get yourself in trouble with it. So just know your situations, guys. I'm very big on that. Like, if I'm fishing a kelp patty, this will be the first thing I pitch out because I want to have some fun. And plus, it's not going to break me off in anything. And if it runs towards the patty, put your rod tip in the water if you're on a private boat, or if you're on a charter boat. Oh, well, I don't know what to tell you. Try to put your rod tip in the water. Try to get down under the patty. I don't know. But yeah, sidetracked. Um, yeah, great setup. But just uh, know where you're going to use it. Don't be a fool. Setup is another bait stick of mine that I like to use. This is a Daiwa Saltus. It's the uh, 30H. And uh, I love it. It's a great bait setup. Great for patties. Great for island fishing. Can handle some bigger class yellowtail. Somewhat actually. I kind of take that back. Uh, when I talk about bigger class yellowtail, I mean 25 to 30 pound can mess this thing up. You might not be able to stop them. It, uh, it's a great setup. I was actually given this entire setup. It's on a Premier Rod which is a, uh, this, this rod right here, great bait stick. So this is the only thing I use it for. I don't really throw jigs on this setup or anything. I just use it as handy dandy bait stick setup. But yeah, it definitely, it's got power to it, but not a crazy amount of power, if you know what I mean. It's, um, it's a good setup if you're just getting started in there. The saltists are primarily cheaper than a lot of the other things. And yeah, guys, if you're just getting started, if you just want a tar boat setup and you guys are like, well, crap, like I'm trying to save money, Dino Saltus. You'll definitely save the money. And it's uh one thing that's like about it is like the wideness. I like their their eels more narrow, you know, but it does well. I've caught many yellowtail on this. It's tried and true. I think my biggest on this was a 30 pounder, but that was on a kelp patty. And I will tell you, if I was not at that kelp patty, I would have been dusted, broken off in something. So yeah, guys. Um Definitely a good stick for average good yellowtail, but I'm gonna get to my next stick that is, um, or my next reel that I use for bigger class yellowtail. Like what you need to do when you need to hunker down against them, you're fishing squid and squid beds. This is the setup to use right here. All right, guys, this is my heavy yellowtail setup. I actually have a new rod coming in for her. Um, the other rod, the eyelid broke, but it was a heavy rod. So yeah, guys, basically, this is the uh, Boss Fury. It's accurate, 600, narrow. Um, I love this thing, power, guys. So like, if you're switch fishing like a squid bed and you know there's gonna be bigger yellowtail, you can put the horse to them with this setup. I mean, it's great. So basically, as I went over earlier, lighter setups, they're fun for kelp patties. You can fish whatever at kelp patty. The yellowtail is not gonna break you off. He's not gonna spool you unless it's some fluke, like, 60 pound monster, you know, like, but that's not gonna happen. And you're probably still not gonna get spooled. But if you're on the island, right, if you're just squid bed, you know, you come across some bigger yellowtail from 30, 35, maybe even like a 40 pounder, like the big boys. This is your best bet. Power, guys. You want that power on them. Because nothing's worse than just losing fish and there's nothing you can do about it. But when you go big, um, you get the results you want um, for the bigger fish. Yeah, guys, I'll even use this on bluefin, but like for yellowtail, this can deal with the big ones. Let's put it that way. You can use this for yo-yoing, having the power, great bait setup. If you're fishing squid, great setup. 
I like them. Um, I like the Boss Fury. They run accurate spider reels. And yeah, guys, cool stuff right here. Next to the jig stick. All right, guys, this is the same exact jig stick I used for bluefin. So if you watch my bluefin tuna foamer video, you'll know it. You've seen it before. Trank 500, HG. It's a Seeker, nine foot, classic series. You guys seen it before. Tried and true, badass jig stick. Caught yellowtail, caught tuna. I love this setup. Trank 500, powerhouse, dude. Like, it's powerful for a low profile. I haven't had one yellowtail break me off on it. And when you're throwing jigs, you're using heavier line. It'll go anywhere from like 80 to 40 for yellowtail. If they're fired up, four, eight, if they're fired up I'll throw heavier just because I want to dog them. I want to destroy them. I want to bring them in quick. But if they're like kind of being weird, they 40 pound, can't dog them too much. But yeah, guys, this is my favorite just jig setup after all. I mean, I love long rods and I like the profiles and I like the Trank 500. I think it's cool catching them on it, you know? Some parts of the world they're using these to catch pike and we're using them to catch yellowtail and tuna it's just it's just cool to me you know but yeah overall i recommend this setup the service iron right now this is the the fpm which is the duran fishing products um i honestly at first i had no clue what this iron was i just thought i bought it at a shop one day or i received it as a gift i totally forget but i've been to it it's duran fishing products um this is the iron i've been using for bluefin and killing it and I love these things. They're anodized. So these irons are anodized, guys. I know I'm totally getting off topic here, but they're anodized. So the color doesn't come off. Like you see little teeny teeth marks, but they're great. But yeah, guys, this is my yellowtail jig setup, service iron setup. This is the way to go. Like for throwing the iron, throwing the cold snipers. You're not vertical jigging on this, guys. You're not yo-yoing on this because it's obviously too long of a rod. But yeah, great setup. I love this thing. You. Hey guys those were all my yellowtail setups and yes one thing i want to go over too is i missed anything let me know if I missed any baits if I missed anything you're like dude this works for me let me know and if i haven't even tried it yet i'll give it a try i like trying new things with fishing honestly because i feel like a lot of people when it comes to fishing they get stuck in their old ways like they're like only the iron catches yellowtail or some stuff like you know like it, it just happens people like to do one thing and one thing only, but I'm always down to try new things. Like if you got some like cool bait that works for your yellowtail, let me know. I'll go buy it. I'll use it. I'll give it a try. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If it works, it works. You know, but if you, sh if you show me a picture with it in the fish's mouth or like a video or something, then I'll have more confidence going into it. But if you just say you caught it, I mean, I'll still give it a try. But I like having the confidence to be honest with you. But yeah. I hope that helped you guys in selecting tackle or like the line sizes because as I'll go over again, get the edge, golden green label. But yeah, I hope overall this helps you guys. Maybe like gets you guys a new setup if you want one. Um, yeah, just anything to help you guys out because, you know, there's so many selections in fishing and anything to give you guys the extra edge when it comes to fishing yellowtail, especially on a charter boat. I know it's hard to have the extra edge at times, but you come to learn over time. And um, yeah, guys, I'll try to get more fishing episodes out to you as soon as possible. But as of right now, I'm pretty booked up with school and getting the boat back together. But yeah, I hope we have some fishing coming to you guys soon. And I will see you guys, hopefully, on the water next week. That would be great. So, I'll catch you guys later.